According to tradition, Pope Clement was exiled from Chersonesus to a place known now as the city of Increment. Here, the Pope was forced into hard labor in the quarries. Today, they're still active, a source of snow-white limestone. The industry is cut through the mountain, leaving behind caves and canyons, a curious place for an Orthodox monastery. Once a very large complex, it's now just a fraction of its previous size. A small monastery and several churches remain. It's believed that this was the site of the first Christian community founded by the most famous of all the prisoners of Crimea, Pope Clement. Crimea has always been a crossroads between east and west, north and south. It looks peaceful now, but it's always been a site of conflict. Genghis Khan's son led the Mongol hordes through this area in the 13th century. In 1475, the monastery was sacked and looted during the Ottoman invasion. Later, in 1783, it was retaken by the Russian Empire and restored. After a period of flourishing, the monastery was closed by Soviet authorities in 1931 and made into a museum. Part of the monastery was only rebuilt, just as Christianity itself in Crimea, after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1989. What has been brought back to life is but a small pearl within the entire cave monastery complex. A small community of monks continue to pray and maintain the church's cave tradition here. Some monks try to live in ancient cells hewn from the rock, like this one, imitating the life of the desert fathers and even perhaps living in similar conditions to those of St. Clement. Vadim Prokopenkov is a frequent visitor to the monastery, and this time he's brought his children. He often comes to venerate the relics of St. Clement that were brought here in 1994. He attributes his conversion to this saint. Prokopenkov is a scholar of historical sciences, an entrepreneur, and the head of the St. Clement Foundation, dedicated to keeping the Holy Pope's memory alive. Here in 98, the Roman Emperor Trajan exiles St. Clement to Tersonesis because he is very unwelcome in Rome because those who are close to the emperor began to listen to him, and they absolutely did not want to hear a sermon about Christ. They needed a sermon about the emperor, about his authority. What is the most striking thing from the point of view of those who study his legacy? What is striking is that being the third bishop of Rome, during his exile on the Crimean Peninsula, Saint Pope Clement was not replaced by the high priest in Rome. So at that time, Sevastopol became the center of the world for Christianity, and served as such for three years. From here, the Pope preached, baptized, and converted them to Christ. Pope Clement looked at the desolation of the open pit mine as the vineyard of the Lord. In a short time, the saint led many people to God and founded dozens of Christian communities. The quarry workers were tormented by heat, hard work, and thirst. Tradition tells us of the miracle that Saint Clement performed to help them. Seeing their thirst and torment, the saint prayed and pointed to this stone from which fresh drinking water sprang forth. This source is still known as Clement's Spring. It ran until the 1960s when, during the rock mining operations, the water vein was cut. From then, the water began to accumulate behind the monastery, creating a picturesque lake. Today, much of the rest of the Crimean Peninsula again needs a miracle of water, as the supply of fresh water from Ukraine has been blocked since 2014, part of the ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia for control over the peninsula. The current unrest, although it hasn't yet directly touched the monastery complex, marks just another period in its long history. The mere existence of the Holy Clement Monastery here is a great miracle itself 
of course, it is very ancient. This colossal complex of cave temples have not yet been fully studied. The monastery appears in written sources only in 1850, when it was decided to revive the ancient monasteries. St. Clement's Basilica itself, which is in these caves, is very ancient. It dates back to the Middle Ages. It is difficult to argue with the scientists talking about the first centuries, but many of the artifacts that we, as the Society of St. Clement, have been buying for almost 10 years at auctions abroad and bring here confirm the deep antiquity of this place. The artifacts we have purchased testify to the fact that St. Clement was martyred in Tersonesis, and his veneration arose here many centuries ago. The most holy place of the monastery is undoubtedly this chapel, where according to tradition, St. Clement himself cut the rock. From this chapel, then, the Christian faith burst forth throughout the Crimean Peninsula, which later, thanks to Prince Vladimir I, Christian King of Rus, and the brother saints Cyril and Methodius, spread to the entire eastern Slavic region. St. Clement lit that fire here, in this simple cave. When, in 988, Prince Vladimir was baptized with his troops in Tersonesis, he took the icons from here and invited the priests from Tersonesis to Kiev and brought the relics of St. Clement and made it the main sanctuary. The question arises as to who was the first heavenly patron of the Rus, St. Clement. His relics were used by metropolitans during the Divine Liturgies. This is so amazing that the heavenly patron saint of the Rus is the Roman saint, our common Christian saint. After an extended period of exile in Crimea, St. Clement was executed for his faith. Some historians place his martyrdom in the year 101, although the exact date is not known for certain. He was thrown into the Black Sea with an anchor around his neck, literally becoming that seed described in the gospel that had to die to bring much fruit.